found a way, Saren gonna have the Azir removed from him as well. All righty, so Juani will be the last ban, so what will be that first pick here for the side of the Wildcats? I like what you said about Grell and Seiya being the focus. Everybody jokes around about Heaven or Grell. Well, they're gonna try to stop him at the Pearly Gates by focusing those top tier champs. Just a little bit of a hover on the Garen, referencing yesterday's attempted counter pick towards an Aatrox, which just didn't work out so hot. But hey, Maokai's open. You got first pick blue side. Why not? And then we're talking about the other counter pick as well yep. for ATT with the team. Both of them kind of going, all right, look, we tried our time just, but it didn't quite work out. But I do believe it will be a Aatrox that's picked up at somewhere along this line. And then the question is, like, how high priority do they want to give towards picks like for Holy Phoenix or even for Gavano yep. on this bot side just to try and get comfort there? Especially Especially with the clays to already take off. All right, well, in surprise to absolutely no one, Aatrox is open and Aatrox is drafted by the side of Isarus. Now, what will be the thing to accompany it? I would expect them to probably draft their jungler in the first half since jungle's already been hit by so many bands, but they'll go with a Silas, both solo lanes picked up here. Yeah, I think the big one is that both more carry oriented or farm oriented junglers are off the board so that does open up a lot and um, i imagine the maokai as well would be going towards the jungle for ferris in this instance especially as they take the nar as the answer in towards add's aatrox so it'll be a question now of okay do we go for the mid lane or do we want to try and get holy phoenix onto comfort now things like right. the kaisa even the samira as well which holy phoenix has made a name from self for are still open so looks like they will just try and get some uh, fixture here for sarah well the Maokai having such flexibility is so great too, because even though you're seeing the Nar and you're like, all right, he can't go top now, he could still be flexed to support. You still don't know 100% of the time. So that'll still keep Isaris guessing. Uh, what do they want to go for here? Okay, locking in the Kai'Sa as their final band, as their final pick, excuse me, before the second half of the band starts. Yeah, I'm curious to see what the game plan is for Istanbul Wildcats. Um, Samira going to be taken off the board. Holy Phoenix is also a big, uh, Nila player as well, except plays at Eclipse, at least from what I could see in the playoffs. So could be going towards something like that, especially when you've got, you know, Sark screen who can add damage, Saren who can add a lot of damage as well. The big AOE wombo combo could be the direction that Istanbul Wildcats are looking at. And that's one of the things that I always look at if you're gonna try to draft Nila. You gotta have damage elsewhere. In terms of a marksman, her damage profile is generally considered very low compared to a lot of other choices you could have. So anyway, Samira, Trundle, banned out. That kind of tells me that they're a little bit concerned about having the stats sapped from something like that Maokai if he's going to be main tank role there in the jungle or something. So what will be the other ban here from Isarus? Misfortune is the big one for me, right? Like, she does very well against the Kai'Sa, makes it a little bit awkward, so I assume that's going to be it. Because Holy Phoenix, I mean, look at the, the combo you have already for Istanbul Wildcats. Like, add a misfortune into the mix there. It's going to be great. So they do end up taking that one away. So now the big question mark is what does Holy Phoenix want to do? I think another jungle ban and even towards Grell is more than likely going to be it. Yep. Could go towards something like the Jarvan that we've seen from... Um, from Ferret, or even looking at a little bit of a mixture in the jungle pool as well for Grell. He's been someone that's had the likes the Lilia band away a lot from him in the domestic league, but I don't think it'll really work with the combo that they have at the moment. All righty, Nautilus right. banned out instead. I actually like this because Nautilus just has that point and click guaranteed engage. And when you look at the, the composition from Isaris so far, there's not really a lot of good engage there. Yeah, and does really well as well with the Kai'Sa, right? Like, just sets her up perfectly to dive into the back line with the Killer Instinct. Now, to see what Jelly wants to try and take a hold of here, but no, it'll actually be the Wukong that they're going to give over towards Grail. So I like that, right? Again, yeah. just all in on this short range combo. Dive, dive, dive is exactly what Isaris is going to try and go. All righty, Wildcats. What is the answer going to be? I need to see an AD carry, and I need to see either a support or a jungler, depending on how they want to pilot the Maokai. I assume Maokai will be going jungle because they banned out the trundle. Neela locked in. You called it, buddy. Yeah, the big well, interesting part for this, though, is that Holy Phoenix actually plays Eclipse Neela. At least okay. looking at his playoffs. So traditionally, we see something like the Immortal Shield Bow and that kind of stuff coming through. So I think it'd be really interesting to see exactly what that build path is going to be for Holy Phoenix. But now I want to see something like a, uh, that can try and help out, an enchanter that can help this Neela. And Yumi, not the worst of ideas. Though it looks like uh, they're still trying to uh, figure out exactly what they want to go for. Yeah, I think Yumi right. just works super well here with the Neela. Yep, Yumi and Neela going to be that bottom lane combination. So what is the support here for Isarus? What do they take to try to punish the Yumi pick? It's 
super hard. Like, you could go with something that's, like, more enchanter-oriented, right? But that's not exactly what you want for a Kai'Sa. She wants something yeah. that by that engage. You have the Wukong there already, so technically you may not need it, but I still think something that can opt into that engage role, like a Leona, could work really well. Rel fits into that wheelhouse as well. Looks like Jelly is going to try and pilot that. Okay, so there's your engage in the second half of the draft for Isris. They've got the Wukong, they've got the Rel. They're doing all right here with that. Now, let me ask you, who are you going to give the edge to here based off of these drafts? I like what Isris have brought to the table. I think okay. just from power pick perspective, right? Aatrox, Silas, super, super strong. You've got great front to back team fighting that can come through great engages. Um, and it feels like for Istanbul Wildcats, it's kind of a case of trying to absorb part of that engage and then immediately turn it around with things like the Maokai, the Neela as well to try and set it up. But it's it's definitely going to come down to a case of execution in team fights. And this can be a very back and forth game depending on how these early fights turn out. All righty. Well, let's rock and roll. Both of these teams, winless thus far, 04 versus 04. Both of them really want to get this last win, especially for Isaris Gaming, playing in front of the home crowd. You know you're exiting after this stage of Worlds. You would love to do it on a high note. Especially as uh, over the course of the weekend, or even the week, sorry, we've had you know, the parents of some of the players in the crowd, like being able to finally give that victory to the home crowd would mean so much for this squad. But even for the TCL representatives as well, right, a lot of pride on the line, especially for someone like Holy Phoenix, six TCL titles, an MSI appearance, the world's appearances as well. He's been someone who's been very prominent in the TCL space. We'll have to see if you can try and carry this game or at least provide that extra little bit of uh, pizzazz on this Neela. Exactly. Show us some style. Show us some of those moves. We haven't really got to see a lot of this champion. I mean, people always meme about how new champions are overpowered, they're overloaded, they take over the game when they're released. For some champions like Zeri, it's like, yeah, you gotta beat her to death with the nerf bat to get her out of the game, but Neela hasn't had the same spotlight. She hasn't had the same ability to steal the show. So I'm always sort of excited to see somebody try and show us how it's done yeah the reason we haven't tend to see well depends on the re region right like at least in lpl the reason we don't see a lot of uh Neela is because she tends to die a lot in lane and i don't mean in the, the 2v2 what i mean from that is oftentimes you end up with just four man dives because she gets shoved underneath the tower and yep. that makes it really difficult to try and play her this time around though because Saren had already got the victor and he knew he was into the Silas, he should have wave push. It'll make it very difficult for Isaris to try and go for these bot lane dives. So Holy Phoenix and Farfetch get a little bit more time to scale up, get to a position where they're comfortable. And one of the big underutilized things as well, or at least under talked about things with Anila, is that you tend to hit level six with both the AD carry and the support for something like the Rift Herald fight, which yeah. can be so impactful when we talk about the back and forth nature of these squads. Also, a lot of extra combat power for the side of Wildcats in the bottom lane summoner spells. Exhaust versus Cleanse there on the 80 carries. And then obviously being Yumi, you get an extra combat summoner spell anyway. So good stuff there as looks like we're going to get Isaris invading nice and early here. No handshake, same side or same buff opposite side starts here. Instead going to steal away that red, get things moving and shaking nice and early. This is spotted though by uh, Istanbul Wildcats, right? They actually placed the ward in that tri brush. So information for a ferret means he can more than likely move over to the opposite side and try and answer back i mean even then the second ward here so yeah they are well aware of what isaris are up to here and what grell is trying to achieve they know exactly how long grell is staying for as jelly and gavoto going to back up a little bit here in bottom it's say a first to level two in mid lane on that silas grell will just walk back into his own side of the jungle now does not want to overstay his welcome of course ferret on the maokai not the fastest clear ever so still clearing through that second buff of his own and now he'll move towards the enemy jungle trying to steal a red back perhaps yeah sometimes you look at grell and go oh you know you can move in towards this top side try and catch at the maokai as he moves in but because you've got full push for a star screen and saren is also doing a really good job of setting up a bit of a wave stack here for himself as well there's no one who can really immediately mo move over to try and deal with Ferris, so should be able to get this without any sort of issues. And again, we'll just get this split map coming through, which will favor Star Screen, but might make it a little bit tough for Holy Phoenix and Farfetch. And I love this ward oh, from Isaris. This ward that let him know that Ferret was coming in there. Sega is going to jump back in onto Saren now. Ferret is first here, but Grell is also ready to go. W over the wall. He'll jump in and find Saren. One more hit will take him out. It's first blood over to the home team. Now you see there, Saren tries to move over to help out Ferret, but with Grell able to sneak in over the wall, does a really good job to turn that one back around. So nicely done by the hometown heroes. 
Very, very good stuff there to get on the board. Again, I'm complimenting that ward. I'm complimenting them being ready to know what Ferret's gonna wanna do. And it's not like Ferret could just turn that into a mid lane gank either because it, your mid laner's Victor. What's he gonna do? I mean, yeah, sure, dude, I'll shoot him with a laser. But it turns around the other way beautifully. Grell utilizing the power of Wukong to hop over the wall and surprise him. And hey, it's a good start for Isaris. And that's where I want to see Isaris try and continue through this mid jungle. So Ferret wants to move top to get away from that. Alrighty. ADD will try to just back it up here a little bit. Ferret just utilizing the power of Maokai CC to force that flash away from the enemy top laner. So ADD is going to hurt a little bit after that one. Still has about half health left. Still has a potion being drunk. Uh. All right. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Saren steps up. Saren is in for a world of hurt. He has no flash. Saren? Oh, oh no, buddy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I was like, oh my. That's a lot of Isaris members around here. But again, I like this, right? We talked about how Saya was going to struggle to get push in mid because of the, the nature of the matchup. Well, if Grell and Saya just play through the fact they have a much stronger 2v2 in these early stages, well, then you can actually get that control for Silas that you need start to bring that attention down towards the bot side and make things incredibly uncomfortable for Holy Phoenix and Farfetch. And overall, like Grell and Saya, not even just in this game, across all of play-ins, have been so incredibly good. They have been the standout performance from Isaris, and we're seeing it once more here against this number one. All right, Saya tries to uh, just jump forward a little bit, always just keeping Saren guessing. Is he going to go in? Is he going to jump on me, right? Always posing that sort of a threat here. As bottom side, Gavoto and Jelly, they're doing just fine up against the Nila. Not really a whole lot to talk about in that match. Up. Starscream takes a lot of damage from ADD, but now he knows the Aatrox has no cooldowns and his Narbar is charging, so he'll run him off there with a couple of extra auto attacks. Honestly, though, just the one kill here at the very start. Nothing super bloody, nothing super crazy. You can see Starscream leading in the EXP, but Funny enough, Holy Phoenix and Farfetch, this is that leveling advantage that you were talking about that they have over their counterparts because of me. Yeah, and this is where it becomes super good for things like Rift Herald when you want to fight, because traditionally you won't actually see the supports getting that level six before the Rift Herald fight, but Nila will offer that. I was actually keeping my eyes on this top side though, because Star Screen definitely needs help crashing this wave, especially if the Wukong for Grail wanted to go towards that top side, but looks like they're not going to go towards it just yet. So nope. Star Screen will be able to crash this wave, but that was a bit of a dangerous moment there for Star Screen after taking that poor trade. I guess it's just one of those ones where you cross your fingers and say, I hope he ain't there. <laughs> That's the shy. That's yep. what he does. It's just, it, it's just, it just like, all right, out. you better not be here. Or I'm, I'm screwed, but hey, it works out well for him. Saya's going to try to crash the wave here in the mid lane at the same time. Gavoto and Jelly making their way back down towards bottom here as they just fire off that plasma to grab themselves an extra little minion. Want to stay caught up. They're bringing Grell down here, but he has no ulti, so I wouldn't expect a full-on tower dive or anything like that. Grell will just be hanging around. Saya, though, now if you bring four, then you can do something. But instead, they're just going to start up the Drake and let Grell take that one. Yeah, I mean, using the fact that you get push for, for, for Gavato and Jelly here to get the dragon is nice. Saya will just be a bit of a nuisance in the mid lane, but overall, you're not really going to be able to set up for too much of a dive when you don't know where Ferret is, and you definitely don't want to get caught underneath that tower against someone like a Maokai. So using the fact they've got these early leads, Dragon taken, Isris playing a nice early game out here. Yep, Isris Gaming having an all right start, but still nothing too super worrying for the Wildcats, right? The game could still go the other way. They had that one play early in the mid lane. They got the Drake. It's nice, but it's uh, you're not sweating just yet. That's what I was going to say. There was either two ways that this game was going to go. It was going to be, you know, gloves are off, all fisty cuffs, just brawling back and forth, or it's a, hey, there's a lot of life riding on this, which there definitely is for both these teams and the pride of the region. So yeah. you can see them taking this nice and slow, making sure that they're going to get their, well, dot their I's, cross their T's, not allow the enemy any sort of input where they don't want it to be. And right now it is Is Isris that's dictating the pace of this. I just think that Grell, now that he's hit that level six, will get a little bit more active on the map. Wukong having access to that Cyclone is such a massive uh, step up for his damage output. And when you already kind of look at Saren, who's calling a lot of help, Bus. Oh. Nah, we're good, we're good. It's always a little bit worrying when you see Nar's health bar go that low, but then you remember, nah, he's fine. I'm just gonna kite him out anyway. He's He's okay, but I agree with you, my friend. I want to see some helicopter monkey action here out of the Wukong, if he can find an angle. But Holy Phoenix will rotate himself up through the river right now. Uh, Holy Phoenix, that's a dangerous spot to walk, bud. All right, he's not gonna walk in there. I was, 
This is the advantage we're talking about, though, right? Jelly's still level 5, you got level 6 hit for Farfetch, and that's why Istanbul Wildcats are calling all reinforcements to this Rift Child. They want to make the fight happen. Jelly won't hit 6 just yet, and that could be the difference maker here for Istanbul Wildcats. Alrighty, where's my team fight? 5v5, eight and a half minutes into the game. Isaris going into the Rift Herald pit here. As a uh, Maokai ulti stolen away, fired off by the Silas. It's going to hold him at bay long enough, you would think. But now the real Maokai ult comes back. Maokai ult versus Maokai ult. Maokai combat. There we go. They stole away the Rift Herald. Wildcats are happy with that, but now they might lose Ferret. Yumi ulti fires off. They're ready to go back in. It's Jelly dying first, and now they got to strike back. One for one so far, as Grell tries to get away. And ADD is in the middle of the fight in the middle of everybody. Saren flashes over the wall, but Grell is ready and waiting. Starscream tries to escape, but ADD has wings spread wide. Gavoto's ready to chase. It's three dead on the side of Wildcats. Ferret has already respawned. Isaris takes the fight. Istanbul Wildcats do get the Herald, though, at the back of that, so at least they will manage to escape away, but a bit of a messy fight. Starscreen didn't have access to the NAR ultimate off-rip, so they end up using a lot of time trying to get that NAR to a position where he can transform. And here, I actually thought this was going to be a big win. Look at Hody Phoenix in this fight where he's able to get this uh, ultimate off of two members, and maybe that could have set up for a bit of damage, but unfortunately, just not quite enough in the tank. Good engage coming through from the Grell as well for Jelly to start this one off. That's the ultimate from Holy Phoenix. I thought could have been the difference maker, but Grell flashes away. Saya just about gets out, and Gavado untouched this whole time is just going nuts on the Istanbul Wildcats. And you can see Starscreen and Holy Phoenix. They're like, okay, we got health bars, but you don't got anybody left. It's just time to uh, get on out of there. Not, uh, not the most intensive reactions, but. Now let's see what bottom lane might turn into. Jelly still only level five here on the rail. Like you said right before that fight, that could be a big difference maker. It wasn't. It wasn't at all. Not even a little bit. They still end up taking the fight. So I think at least for Isaris, right, having two kills now onto Grell means that they can actually play very much through the uh, the team fight, right? Grell has just hit the Divine Sunder. We're going to have our Master Card Mythic in a second. You've got Cavado as well, who's got two kills too. Like, this is actually a really good spot now for Isaris, especially if you want to play around this dragon in a minute's time. Like, first Mythic's coming through is yep. going to be massive for this next grab. Big, big stuff when the item spikes come online. The Sunderer that you pointed out, I really want to see Aatrox hit that Eclipse. We know how much of a power spike that is to the item, the champion. In combination, it's just a little bit silly. But we do still have slightly over a 1,000 gold lead for the side of Isaris. Wildcats are still looking for their chance to jump back in here. Total gold showing us that it's Gavoto, the biggest winner of the early game so far, sitting at nearly 4,300. Grell's the one right behind him. The jungler outpacing both mid laners in terms of gold because he got those kills in his pocket. And you can see as well, we we're talking about uh, the preference here for Holy Phoenix going towards the Eclipse as well. So, going to be trying to dish out a little bit more of that uh, lethality damage, but does mean he doesn't have that as much safety when he goes into these fights because the Immortal Shield bow shield significantly larger, but uh, at least the Eclipse can dish out a little bit more uh, at these early stages of the game. So, we'll have to see if Holy Phoenix is going to be able to have that big impact with the Eclipse, but especially when Gavado and Grell are in good spots. Looks like they might want to try and make a play on bot side, but kind of second-guessing themselves. Yeah, they're they're bringing the party down with the Drake about to spawn and the wave crashing into the turret. They were looking for a potential punish on the Wildcats, but it is a 4v4. Potentially, if the Victor wants to rotate around as well, he's not going to show up just yet. Both top laners will have teleports available here in just a moment, but Grell has already found his way out of Ferret. There comes Jelly. There's your backup. There's an easy kill, Ferret. Oh, that's a uh, feel bad. That is definitely, it feels bad. And the fact as well that Saya manages to zone Saren away from getting into the fight as well means that again, you, they just get to turn over towards this dragon and Isra is doing a really good job in setting up for these fights early and getting the leads that they need. I mean, Isra, I mean, the LLA crowd is definitely behind them and you can see it. You love to hear it. You love to see it. The hometown teams are always going to have that extra bit of heart behind them there in the audience. Grell picks up that second Drake of the game. So now... Now, my friend, it's a 2,000 gold lead. It's a two Drake lead, with one of those being Hextech, which is super valuable with the nine attack speed, nine ability haste. This lead feels really good for them. If they can get the next Herald when it spawns, I think they're gonna be in a really good spot. Jelly having a flash away here from Holy Phoenix and Farfetch using the Yumi ulti trying to catch him. That first Herald is summoned up here in the mid lane. 
Wildcats really want to get the value out of this, at least just the guaranteed two plates of the charge. Wham, bam, there it is. Won't get a whole lot more out of it, but they had to make sure they escorted it in there. Yeah, all hands on deck from Istanbul Wildcats to try and get one to crash in, but Acerus, no, don't actually take too much of a loss off it. Yes, he gets the plates, but again, so many members of Istanbul Wildcats there don't actually end up in a position where you can try and you know, buffer someone ahead or give someone a big buff off of that. So Istanbul Wildcats still going to just reset, come back onto the map, and for Isaris with the, the gold lead that they have, with the fact that they're kind of in control at the moment, and you even just have the more traditional, easy to execute front of back fight, I mean, Isaris are looking pretty good at the moment. Isaris, you can see Seiya also dropping the Maokai ulti there in the mid lane just to get that shoved out, get his own reset. Everfrost done for the Silas makes him very, very scary when he jumps all in because he can engage with the E2, immediately follow up with the Everfrost. You're guaranteed to hit both parts of the Q. It becomes very nasty very quickly when champions that already have hard CC purchase this item and can just make the chain CC themselves. This is why I immediately swapped to a Silas one trick when uh, Enchanters came <laughs> into support meta because I was like, I'm not an Enchanter player. I can't do this. So I was like, cool, you know who looks fun? Silas, because exactly that reason. He's just he does so much so well. Great engage, great setup, you know, so difficult to deal with, good scaling. Like, it, there's, a, there's a very good reason why he has become such a staple in the mid lane, especially when you're able to play through 2v2 like Grell and Seiya have been doing. It gives you so much control, and Isaris wants more playing off that. You just got Grell hovering around mid, goes, yeah, Seiya, yep. if they ever come at you, I'm right there beside you, buddy. And then they can turn that into Rift Herald number two. All righty, Herald number two. I said I wanted to see them be able to secure this one to balloon the lead, and it looks like they got the same plan. Seiya stealing away the Gnar ulti. I really like this choice, but everybody is marching up from the bottom lane. It will be Wildcats who get more men here First, they're still waiting on Jelly to come up from bottom lane on the side of Isarus. They've got Gavoto right next to him as well. Fires off the Void Seeker, not gonna hit anybody with that one. But Istanbul Wildcats will successfully stop the Herald take for now. Isarus are incredibly split though. You've got Gavalo and Jelly on one side, and you've got the rest of Isarus on the other. So Seiya needs to find some way to get a big narrow top and buy space for uh, Gavalo to get to the other side of the fight. Because you can see, right, Istanbul Wildcats just putting a wedge right down the middle and pushing Isaris away. All righty, Isaris are not ones to be scared off that easily. They're ready to go again. Krell jumps in, finds the knockoff on a multiple target. Starscream, not ready to transform just yet, but Holy Phoenix is ready to fight back and Jelly's gonna be killed off first. Krell's taking low. Holy Phoenix still trying to fight it out. Starscream still somehow alive as Saren falls to Seiya, and Seiya tries to keep himself going. He won't burn away quite yet, but he finally dies there at the very end. The fight goes to the Wildcats. It's been so incredibly close, but just Istanbul Wildcats are able to eke it out. It looks so good for Isaris at the start, but Istanbul Wildcats able to clutch it out of the end. Ferret, though. Oh, Ferret, you gotta be careful about these, buddy. That was close. Still ends up being a three for two in the favor of the Wildcats. They'll bring themselves up to just about a 1,000 gold deficit with a minute to go before the Drake spawn. And that's the thing, right? It kind of feels like for Isis now, it's like, okay, we've got both the Rift Herald and the Dragon position that we can play for. Whereas for Istanbul Wildcats, you kind of need to focus the dragon just because of how important a third Infernal Dragon would be for Isaris. So, we'll have to see how they're going to play this one out. But looking at the start of this, like again, I, Istanbul Wildcats kind of give up their positioning here where Isaris then feel like they can engage. Grell goes over, but Gavado not really in a position to follow up. You've got all five members of Istanbul Wildcats here. I thought with Holy Phoenix missing out on the ultimate thanks to a great ultimate from Jelly, pulling him back from Gavado might have been enough, but Starscreen ends up transforming at the right time. Holy Phoenix doesn't end up going down thanks to heals from the Yumi. And Isaris end up so overextended trying to finish off low health members that they kind of forget about the rest of the fight where Starscreen and Ferret are finishing off members themselves. Nicely done, very scrappy. That's what I like to see. Man. That's what I want to see when we have these two teams coming in here in a pride match, right? You're fighting for your honor. You got to get in there and scrap with But now you got to scrap again. Five Let's seconds till Inferno. Look at the summoner spells that are missing across the board. If you get caught, you are done. There are no second chances. I'm going to have to see who can try and come out on top. Ultimates are up galore. 
on its Istanbul Wildcats were on the uh, fight already. All right, Wildcats starting up the Drake. Jelly wants to go in. He tries to find Saren, but now he's found himself isolated. Jelly's alone in the middle of the enemy team. He's already down. This was a mess from Isaris, but ADD is going to try to get something back. The World Ender keeps him alive for a little bit more. He tries to get away from the Chaos Storm. Starscream now alone as Seiya and Grell try to catch up to the enemy top laner. Grell still looks for it, gets the kill. That'll be one dead on the side of the Wildcats. They're still ready to fight back for Isaris. Holy Phoenix getting jumped on, but Seiya is getting chain CC'd. He can't fight his way out, and the Wildcats win another fight. They aren't done yet. Gavolto trying to get himself away, but Holy Phoenix is ready to go on the chase. Isaurus are collapsing in these bigger team fights. Gavolto was in mid lane. He was trying to push in the wave, so he wasn't there for the turnaround from Grell. Grell wasn't expecting to run into the tree either as he tried to escape, so bit of a bedlam situation for Isaurus, and that will give Istanbul Wildcats the step that they need to get the dragon. Rift Herald will be taken by, by Grell in response, but still, that's two fights in a row now Istanbul Wildcats have come out on top. Jelly's engaged there. Like, yeah, he... I feel like he got solo Q engage syndrome. He sees the angle, he's like, I'm gonna get this dude. But, but then you're alone. Yeah. And that dude has friends. You scream, I've got the mid laner, and then turn to see that there is nobody, nobody. who's with you. I mean, even from the position that they're in, right? Like, Gav Gavato is not really in a position. Say I can't really follow up. I think he may have thought ADD was a little bit closer, but just unfortunate. And to be honest, Jelly's actually been really good with the engages. Some of the flanks that he's found, uh, even domestically, have been fantastic, but just unfortunate there. And ADD does buy a little bit of time. And this is where I got a bit nervous again. We're kind of seeing the bloodlust starting to creep into some of these players where that gives the opportunity for Starscream to get caught. But again, Gavoto's in mid lane. He's not here for the turnaround. Doesn't want a killer instinct into this fight. And with Holy Phoenix still having access to the ultimate, he's heating up Istanbul Wildcats just enough to carry this fight through. And then Gavoto trying to get away here, wants to escape, but it's, uh, it's pretty difficult to get away from Maokai. He'll still manage to do it just with the blast cone there. Super thankful for those plants. As Starscreen and ADD, back to the split push situation down here in the bottom lane. But yeah, I really think that it's just so difficult to play into Maokai in general in these river fights, in these neutral objectives, because the reason nobody else could come with Jelly, the ulti was zoning you all away. You can't walk into that thing. Yeah, and that's why, like, it's really good if Say is able to steal away. Like, Say has access to really good ultimates here between the Melkai ult, between the Nar as well. There's a ton of big ultimates that could be game defining, but you need Say there with you. You need him to kind of help start off these fights. It's the, the one, two, three kind of combo between Grell, Jelly, and Say that is the go button for Isteris, but they just haven't quite been able to find the coordination on that front. Well, they still have a lead. They're still up about a thousand gold. They've still got a one Drake advantage, but their momentum is what has been suffering here with Wildcats winning the last couple of fights. Baron is on the table, but their lead is not so commanding that I would expect them to try to start a 20-minute Baron anytime soon. Over on the side of the Wildcats, they're cool just waiting, letting this one scale up a little more, let Victor get to the point where he's super scary. You've already got your second item done on Holy Phoenix, who, by the way, has 100% kill participation, as does Farfetch, as does Saren. Like, all of these guys are involved with everything. So that means, that tells me they're all fighting as a team all the time. And I, again, I think that's the best way to try and do this is Istanbul Wildcats, right? Like that big wombo we kind of talked about with the Victor, Holy Phoenix having that ultimate as well is going to be the difference maker. But you're going to have to start to indexing into stuff like Void Staff for Saren because Say has already correctly identified, hey, I mean, the majority of the damage is going to be coming from Saren. Let me go towards a Banshee's Veil. Wouldn't be surprised to see things like Hex Drinker start to come out for ADD, Grell as well, even going for some of these more magic resist focus builds. This is how you can try and fight back against Istanbul Wildcats because of the way Neela kind of operates in these fights. Neela can be scary if she can jump in and hit that multi-ulti with the apotheosis. It has been described before on the internet as sort of a janky Diana ult. Yeah. So that's still a Diana ult, though. Mm -hmm. So that can combo really, really well, especially with Yumi layered over top of it. Both teams have such a powerful potential to wombo combo. I'm really just looking for setup. I'm looking for who gets the angle, who gets the jump on the other squad. Well, in a minute, 30 until Dragon. Looks like Istanbul Wildcats are going to try and crush in this wave to get down mid turn. 
Acerus aren't really in a position to try and stop this right now. It's only Gavoto who's underneath the tower, but Krell! Oh boy! Krell's ready to go after Holy Phoenix, who immediately gets himself right back away with a dash. They're gonna bring in Starscream with a TP. And it's all four of the Wildcats here in mid lane, as Saren is still up there in the top side, dealing with Seiya. Both mid laners having their TPs ready to go. 22 minutes, 52 seconds into the game. Isris gets their first turret with ADD, picking it up bot side. Good shout from Istanbul Wildcats not to panic on the Grell engage, especially with 50 seconds until the next dragon. They don't flash, they don't burn any of the summoner spells. It's just the ultimates that they use to get out of dodge. Actually, I suppose the heal from Farfetch was used, but it does mean that they'll still be able to fight relatively well at this next one, unless Holy Phoenix gets on the rough side of this. I think he should be okay. The Herald will charge in, but it can't instantly kill the turret. They have to follow it up with the enchanted auto there from Grell's Q. That means that... Isurus will get themselves their second turret of the game, and now they will have priority. They will have control over the river. ADD is going to go back to base. He'll recall. He has an unleashed teleport to join up if need be. Say so, yeah. He's trying to hover out of vision here. You can see he swapped over to the sweeper, just clo clearing all the vision out and going to just sit in this mid lane. Because traditionally what you see is Holy Phoenix will push in mid, solo, and that's what Seiya wants to try and punish. This is why it's so dangerous to put your control wards in the very edge of that brush, because you can see it did not detect the ward. But now Seiya with a stolen ulti. They're ready to go in as Starscream tries to get away. The Wildcats again just pop jelly, but now they're in trouble. Saren's immediately killed in response as Grell finds the ulti the second time. Holy Phoenix and the rest of the Wildcats trying to get away, and they'll kite it out for now. One for one trade, mid laner for support. And that's what we're talking about for Seiya, hiding in that brush, waiting for Istanbul Wildcats. He pounces as Ferris sneaks over the wall. Oh, Starscream's low, Ferret is low. Isris Gaming are on the hunt. Meganar? Mm, he's still got it, but it's, it's dangerous if you jump in there. All right, they're chilling for now. Holy Phoenix and Farfetch have full HP. They're ready to go. If they come around from the side, they might be able to make this fight happen. There is no Nila ulti there for the extra control, though. Hit with the Infernal Chains. Not going to get yoinked back. Holy Phoenix is going to work to zone them away. Ferret does not have smite. So TP will come through from Saren to get back here. So Istanbul Wildcats do it again. They just about... Oh, actually, hang on. Isris are still trying to fight this. There we go. Drake secured. But Isris are ready to go. They finally engage. And they find it on the enemy. AD carry. He gets away. Ferret and Starscream now stuck in the pit. There's no way home for Maokai except a coffin. And now there's no jungle for Istanbul Wildcats. Barret is there. We're still going. The flowers. Oh! No. Farfetch. He's gone too. Farfetch gone. Ferret gone. Holy Phoenix about to be gone. He'll barely escape. ADD staying alive, but it just baits in Saren. Now Seiya's gonna go after him. Grell getting it done. Everfrost locks up Starscream. They're just about to get another one. Double kill back from Seiya. These are the longest fights I have ever seen. People are respawning in the middle of the fight and coming back again. Baron now is gonna be up for the Baron as Is our Isaris will move over towards that objective. Pharaoh won't be here in time, I feel like, but shouldn't, yeah, should be fine. Isra should be able to get this. Yeah, I don't see, I don't see any way that Pharaoh gets there in time. Maokai is just not fast enough as a champion. Baron secured off the back of a big dub for Isra. And again, you hear the crowd going nuts for the hometown heroes. Isra very late coming back into this, but again, Jelly finds Holy Phoenix. Holy Phoenix didn't have the flash because he used it in that last scrap. Ferris will get onto Cavado, which is finding a little bit of time in the backside, but everyone tossing themselves over the wall to continue finding Istanbul Wildcats. And just a little bit unfortunate here, right? Holy Phoenix just gets clipped by the ultimate that Seiya had stolen away. Starscreen isn't really able to help because he's low. And Saren overextends again, thinking he might be able to finish off ADD but it's all a bait as Grell gets in behind them too. So Isaris finding those moments to continue chasing down Istanbul Wildcats. It's been so consistent that we see this. Man, this is a messy game. Isaris have fumbled a couple of team fights earlier on, but then they end up getting this great counter punch here. It brings them into the biggest lead this game has seen thus far. They've got 5K up, team fight damage. There's a whole lot of people doing a whole lot in this one, Dagda. Yeah, definitely when you look across at Isaris, right? Everyone kind of bearing the mantle. The AD carries lacking a little bit, but it's kind of in the nature of the beast. There's ADD. 
ADD trying to get himself out of the dive. Coming out of Holy Phoenix with that Yumi attached to him. Not enough damage to make it all happen just yet. Apotheosis pulls him back in. Maul of Malmordia is going to give him the shield, but ADD is still on the run. They have a tier one turret to seek safety beneath. This is one of the big advantages they got by preventing the Wildcats from getting any structures. And now you get the tier two taken from Isaris. Gavado has already been up here, and he's got a company as well, so overextension from Istanbul Wildcast, bloodthirsty for ADD, and it gives that opening for Isaris once more. It looked really cool from Holy Phoenix going in there, right? Like, oh man, our AD carry's gonna run down your bruiser, the tables have turned, you're in trouble. Oh dang, wait, we forgot the turret. So it doesn't turn into a whole lot, you lose a T2. Wildcats feel like they're scrambling right now, just trying to make something happen. Yeah, and that's the thing with this build, right? You're not actually getting a huge... Oh, hang on, Holy Phoenix. Holy Phoenix. Nah, he's good. He's chill. As this game goes on, you're going to be seeing less and less damage coming out from Holy Phoenix because you're not going the crypto, so your auto attacks aren't going to be doing as much. This is more of a kind of, hey, look, I'm going to have some good setup. Maybe I can have some decent burst damage, but it's not really going to carry fights. It's an Aatrox cosplay build, right? Yeah. You're pretty much doing similar things to what he would like to do. As now, you're getting dope. It's a bad time. Holy Phoenix staying alive, just barely, somehow ready to go, turn around. Holy Phoenix lives. Starscream with a slam back into the wall, but it won't matter. Isaris is just beating him to death with the gold lead. Ferret killed next. Double kill back over to Gavolto. They're still looking for more. Three versus three, even fight. Again, Isaris just take that step too far underneath the turret, though. Istanbul Wildcats will get a couple of kills back, and now the resets will come through for Dragon. Flashes are available for Starscreen. Saren just burnt his, so he will more than likely be the focus of this fight for Isaris. And on the opposite side, I mean, no flash on Grail, no flash on Saya. Jelly as well, gonna struggle to get into these fights. It's gonna come down to creative flank maneuvers from Isaris. But here, I mean, Saya, he just goes in. He wants Holy Phoenix. He sees him take that step too far forward. And immediately, Isaris goes. Ferret is in behind, which actually helps substantially here because it keeps Gavoto a little bit out of uh, place as well. He actually gets blocked up as he tries to go across with the killer instinct. And it means that they can't get access to people like Saren on the back line. Starscreen can buy a little bit of time. And then once more, Isaris goes that bit too far. Jelly can see the victory in his eyes, but it's not quite there. It's not quite enough to dive a tier three turret. So they're gonna get themselves back. They're still gonna be in a nice spot. It's still a lead for Isaris by six and a half thousand. The Drake is the target. The last two have gone the way of the Wildcats. Isaris really wants to control this one, but here comes the ulti. Ferret fires one out. Saya fires one back. Now they're ready to go. It's Jelly and ADD in the back line. Look at a scrap and make it happen. Meanwhile, Holy Phoenix fighting off the rest of the Wildcats, but ADD kills off Saren. Now the fight continues. ADD still fighting through him. Beautifully done. That's it. That's what they were looking for. Mila won't survive any longer either. Ferret tries to get away. It's an ace for nothing. Isaris Gaming takes the game. You can see the happy parents in the crowd. You can see the happy faces in Mexico. Isaris will find their win here against the Istanbul Wildcats and will not find themselves going 0-5. Isaris Gaming, they had one last shot to take a win and take it they did. 31 minutes in, they will defeat the Wildcats and find their first win of Worlds 2022. It was messy, it was scrappy, but it was Isaris winning the game, and you can see how much that means to everyone in the stadium there. Yeah. Great stuff for them to be able to pick up that needed win at home. You love to see it, the signs in the audience, Gavoto, Gavoto. You know it means a lot to be able to do this, especially when you consider this is the first time that Worlds has been in North America since 2016. There's not a lot of international events going down around here. To have the chance to play in front of the home crowd on a stage of this caliber and at least be able to walk away with your heads held high, taking a win, that's worth a lot. Fighting for the pride there, getting the win for these guys. GG to Isaris Gaming. And unfortunately, that means that the Istanbul...